A well-maintained road is a safer road, and trimming trees is an important part of that maintenance. We trim live trees to keep signals and signs visible, preserve available sight distances, and protect and maintain our roadside assets. We also clear storm debris and fell damaged trees that are in danger of falling into the roadway. Tree trimming falls under strict safety guidelines and regulations. Everyone involved must be aware of and abide by the Tree Trimming Operations section of the Virginia Register of Regulations, the VDOT Tree and Brush Policy, VDOT's Best Practices Guidelines, and the Work Zone Requirements of the Virginia Work Area Protection Manual. As with any planned work activity, crews must begin their day with a safety meeting, discuss the day's activities, safety precautions, and what to do in case of an emergency or incident. Before leaving for the job site, take time to carefully look over all the equipment you'll be using. Do you have all the signs, cones, and radios you'll need for your work zone setup? Do you have everything you need to run your saws? Are the chains sharp? Are all the guards in place and working? Is the chipper safe and ready to go? For more information on the chipper, be sure to watch VDOT Best Practices Chipper Operations on your EBB. And most importantly, does everyone have the right personal protective equipment? Before setting up your work zone, a visual assessment must be performed by a trained and certified crew member. Are there overhead or underground electric lines or communications cables in the area? You must always consider overhead or underground lines and cables as being energized. And you are never allowed to work within 10 feet of them. Do any downed trees have cracks, rot, lightning damage, or anything else that could cause unexpected movement of the branches or trunks while being cut? When you get to the work site, stage your vehicles according to your planned work zone setup and where they won't be damaged by falling trees or limbs. Before work begins, a spotter must be in place to control pedestrians and traffic and keep track of everyone in the crew making sure that everyone is aware of the work going on around them and any potential dangers. Working on a limb rack is especially dangerous around cables. Work with your spotter and make all the movements of your elevated work platform slow and deliberate. Stay aware of the cables and remember, if you can't do it safely, don't do it. Take your time and reconsider your approach. On down trees, look for pressure points that when cut may cause trunks and branches to twist, roll, or spring loose violently. While cutting up down trees and large branches, keep an escape route in mind. Make small cuts to release tension from pressure points as you work your way around the sides, settling the weight of the wood safely to the ground. Then. Cut everything into pieces small enough for one person to pick up. When trimming healthy trees, the cuts should be clean, but not flush with the tree trunk. You don't want to injure the branch collar. Leaving the branch collar intact allows the tree to seal itself. Pre-cut large branches to prevent splitting or peeling of the bark. Use the three-cut method. Once trimming operations are done, all cut vegetation must be chipped into mulch or immediately removed and properly disposed of. In some cases, you can leave wood on site for up to seven days, but it has to be on the right of way and outside of the clear zone. There are also some cases where your district roadside manager will authorize the wood to be left on a fill slope. When you get back to the area headquarters, it's time to check your equipment for any problems, clean it, grease it and make sure it's ready for the next job. Mm -hmm.